Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Here's the headline. Shipyard veterans may have been exposed to cancer-causing radioactive material. The Navy has not told them. Okay, look, doesn't matter if you're in the Navy or not, although this article and what I'm going to read is, there are nuggets that we can pick out of this and different ways that we can look at our time in service and potentially develop a claim. When I read this uh, headline, it reminded me of a situation in which a buddy of mine, uh, he's in his 70s, uh, Navy veteran, uh, no, uh, no in theater experience, but was definitely on a ship for a while. And um, anyway, we had to get him connected for his lung cancer. And it reminded me of his exposure that we were able to document. Uh, so I want to share that as we go through this uh, as well, because there are situations where we were exposed to all kinds of different things during our time in service that may have, at least likely is not, caused our current issue. And remember that the VA's threshold is that of, of equal. So if evidence is equal on both sides in equipose, then they are supposed to rule in your favor. Do they get it right all the time? No, they don't. But that's why you have the whole appeal process. And, and if it goes to the judge, the judge uh, will look at the evidence in a more concise way to determine whether or not that evidence is in fact in equipose. And if it is deemed as such, then they will rule in your favor. So with that, let's jump into this. Hit the thumbs up for me, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Helps out a lot. Really, if you let the video run and thumbs up, those are the two biggest things you can do. If you want to support the channel in other ways, you can do so by becoming a member. That helps me to find you quicker in the comments. You can do that by going to the home page of the channel and you will see the member section there and a join button. Uh, that's great. Now, let's jump into it. Shipyard veterans may have been exposed to cancer causing radioactive materials. The Navy has not told them. And we're going to go ahead and jump into the article here. So, Starts off, moments after he... Boy, that is bright white, isn't it? Oh, well. It is what it is. It's winter time. I'm extra white. All right. Let's move on. Moments after he landed in Los Angeles for his son's wedding last year, Gilbert Kip Wayand said he vomited a gallon of blood in the airport parking lot. Severe stomach pain drenching night sweats, and sudden body temperature changes soon followed. Two months later, in May, Way Wayand was diagnosed with acute uh, lymphoblastic leukemia, a type of cancer of the blood and bone marrow that the National Cancer Institute says can be caused by radiation exposure. The diagnosis confused him. At 57 years old, he had been healthy his whole life, rarely even having a cold, and he had no family history of health issues. But the next month, as his son tried to make sense of his illness, he stumbled upon a newly published Navy report outlining efforts to address radioactive materials that have, been, that have contaminated the now-closed Long Beach Naval Shipyard in California for decades. It was the first time Wayand, a Navy veteran who lived and worked at the shipyard in the late 1980s, learned he may have been exposed to radium-226 and st strontium, I don't know, strontium, <laughs> hooked on phonics over here, 90, right? So two, two different types of uh, radioactive uh, materials, I guess, that build up in the body over time and are linked to leukemia and other cancers. The Navy has known about multiple environmental contamina contaminations at the base for more than 20 years. In 2008, it conducted a study that found radiation then publicly documented for the first time in 2023, the detection of radiation involving levels of radium-226 and the strontium whatever, 90, but the Navy had not altered Wayand or alerted. The Navy had not alerted Wayand or any others to the potential exposure. A spokesperson said there is no mechanism in place to notify veterans of possible exposures after the base is no longer operational. That means tens of 
thousands of veterans who worked at the shipyard may have been exposed to cancer-causing radioactive materials and still do not know. It's disturbing. Wayan said from his hospital bed in Tampa, Florida, after his third round of, chepo- of chemotherapy last fall, more should have been done. There should be transparency when something is found out. Wayand sought to spread awareness about the exposure so that other veterans of the shipyard would know that they could too be at risk as he scrambled to secure approval for a bone marrow transplant from the Department of Veterans Affairs. He said that the VA required him to make about a dozen medical appointments, including one for mental health assessment and another for a dental exam. In November, he told NBC News he was being Uh, He was beginning to panic. I don't have time to wait and see what's going to happen, he said. By the time I jump through all these hoops, it's going to be too late for me. On January 10th, Wayan died, leaving his family dazed and outraged. We are all angry. His son, Adam Wayan, said, we feel like we've been robbed. The initial contamination at the former Long Beach shipyard, where vessels used to dock for repair and maintenance, occurred from the 1940s to the 1960s, when workers were disposing of toxic waste, according to the report. Uh, according to the report, the Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command released last June, which, oh by the way, that report, if you can get your hands on it, would then be a piece of evidence for you and your claim. Then, from the 1960s until the 1980s, about 3,000 gallons of chemical waste had leaked out of the damaged storage drums into the ground. And the 99-page report said, again, this is a piece of evidence. It poisoned the groundwater with high levels of, some word I can't say, uh, vinyl chloride, Benzene, uh, a naval report released in 2000 said. So another naval report, Navy report, released in 2000 had uh, more information that would then again be considered evidence, right? The colorless chemicals can cause several diseases including including cardiac defects and some cancers according to the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. A federal public health agency under the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, uh, let's see, concentrations range from 32 to 583 times higher than what was considered acceptable. On top of that, nuclear weapon testing, which began globally in 1945, released radioactive materials into the atmosphere that eventually settled on the ground, according to the California Department of Public Health. Navy officials first detected radium and strontium, I can't, I don't know, as they were cleaning up the affected groundwater and soil in the early 2000s. So I'm, I'm guessing during during the BRAC, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know when that base closed, but you know, through the BRAC, the, the base realignment uh, and closure, um, what happens is, is they have kind of a period of time where they have to clean up the entire base and then eventually it'll get kind of subdivided to the different municipalities, whether it's different cities and county, so forth. So um, the report said in 2008, they confirmed that levels of the substances were above the, um, the goals set for public safety. It was a uh, it was a death concoction, Wayland's, uh, Wayan's son, Adam, said. When you talk about genetic mutation, that's, that's a lot of variables. Uh, from 1985 to 87, Wayan said he lived and worked on the USS George Phillip, which was docked with many other ships on a pier extending into Long Beach Harbor. It was the worst contaminated area at the Long Beach shipyard, according to the Navy report. In his early 20s, Wayan did not have the money to live off base or have relatives nearby he could stay with. So he said, I was there all the time. I was really digging in, digging in deep with that stuff, which I guess all makes sense. 
The, the State Health Department, which reviewed the latest Navy report and gave feedback before it was published, said it was that it is possible that veterans who lived and worked at the shipyard could have been exposed to radiation from the those two uh, types of radiation. And again, that's that uh, report that would then again be evidence. It's unclear how many uh, may have been affected or how many served during that uh, during the start of the contamination in the 1940s until the shipyard closed in 1997. Okay, so it closed in 1997. So, yeah, you're you're dealing with the whole cleanup stuff for, I mean, sometimes it goes, you know, decades after. Uh, because of the Navy's uh, base realignment and closure office that handles the environmental cleanups at closed facilities does not have access to personnel records, Navy spokesman Lieutenant Commander Joe Keeley said. Uh, the website says at least 40,000 people were, were stationed at Long Beach uh, from 1965 to 1970, a peak period for personnel and ship activity during the Vietnam War. It's also unclear how many other veterans besides Wayand may have submitted claims to the VA related to toxic exposure from Long Beach Shipyard. The agency said it does not have the site-specific exposure data. We encourage any veteran who believes they were exposed to toxins during their military service to coordinate with their local Veterans Affairs office, uh, Kylie said, or Keeley. Exposure to high levels of strong, I don't know how to say it, strong, strontium, strontium uh, may cause leukemia and cancers of the bone, nose, lung, and skin, according to the Agency for Toxic Substance, Substances and Disease Registry. While high levels of radium may lead to increased risks of bone, liver, and breast cancer. So that's a lot of different cancers between those two. Experts say it is unclear how long a person would have to be exposed before cancer forms. Uh, a researcher with the University of Brussels uh, and the lead author of the of a 2019 study on the two contaminants said it depends on the dose amount, duration, and proximity. Uh, so again, this all boils down to evidence being an equipose. If the evidence is the same on both sides, uh, then they're supposed to rule in your favor. So if it's a coin flip, they're supposed to rule in your favor. The effects, she said, are not immediate. Uh, the strontium stays in the bones and radium, uh, the most long-lived uh, uh, isotope, builds up in the lungs and bones over time. So that's long, long kind of hibernation periods almost, right? Where they just kind of hang out until bam, you have it. It has a long half-life in the body during which time the radiation continues, uh, says Dr. James Dahlgren who has been treating and studying people with toxic chemical exposures for more than 50 years. When it comes to acute lymphoblastic leukemia, there is no way to prevent it, but Dahlgren said it could have helped if Wayland Wyland, Wyand, uh, had gotten the earliest possible care. If he knew he was at risk for cancer and the doctors taking care of him could recognize the early signs, he said. Wayans' son said there was no way to know. The symptoms appeared suddenly and severely. It waits 30 years and then it hits you like a sack of potatoes, Adam said. Every second counts. From Los Angeles Airport last March, Adam rushed his father whose shoes were soaked in blood to a nearby Veterans Affairs Hospital. Wayand underwent surgery to staple ulcers in his stomach. Uh, his son said the doctors were, uh, the doctors there believed the ulcers were caused by Wayand not eating enough food while, while taking over-the-counter pain relievers for his back. They told him to stop taking ibuprofen, Adam said. Adam said. Less than three years later, Wayand said, uh, Wayand was standing by his son's side at the wedding. It took everything he had to make it, Adam said. I'm glad he was able to make it. Wayand felt fine, relieved to see his son surrounded by so many people who loved him. According to uh, Luis Wayand, who at the time was his girlfriend for 12 years, uh, that night uh, he asked Luis 
about renting a car and driving to Las Vegas to get married themselves, it, if that sounded good. Uh, they changed their return flight and tied the knot at, a little, at, at the little white wedding chapel in Sin City the next day. Back home, Hudson, Florida, more symptoms emerged, night sweats, abdominal pain, chills. The newlywed said it felt like being run over by a truck. By May, his battle to get life-saving care began. Wayan underwent his first chemotherapy treatment over the summer, but he needed to get a bone marrow transplant to survive. The approval process, the VA said, typically requires comprehensive clinical and psychological evaluations, dental assessments, and alcohol, tobacco, toxicology screenings, and so forth. Time was of the essence, Adam said, adding that he felt handcuffed by the VA's multi-step mandates and the waning times for appointments. Adam said his father could not book the necessary dental exam with a VA provider for three weeks. A recent search by NBC News on a VA website that alerted patients to average wait times found that the nearest dental clinic near Wayand was not accepting new appointments. The second closest clinic had an average wait time of 25 days. His life and death in their hands, Adam said. Instead of helping him, they made him go to 12 other appointments. Wayand's health quickly deteriorated and his frail body grew increasingly resistant to chemotherapy treatments. What a rough, rough situation. So sadly, this situation at the shipyard in Long Beach uh, that a lot of folks aren't aware of uh, resulted in this. And I will tell you quickly, if you've hung on, um, my, my friend um, who developed lung cancer uh, had to really go back and look at his time in service. We did a lot of research, we pulled up, and this is all primarily Google searched stuff. And we found the ship that he was stationed on, his ship, was in fact riddled and documented with, as, with asbestos. And not only that, the ship was, was uh, worked on uh, at a shipyard that was also riddled with asbestos. So his lung cancer was at least likely as not to have been caused by his time on this ship. So, um, you know, there, where there's a will, there's a way for some of these things, right? Sometimes you know in your gut that it is service related, but you just don't know how to connect the pieces. And, uh, you know, you need evidence. Um, you know, sometimes you can find the evidence you need online. You can find these different studies and so forth. You can find um, different um, reports that report things like asbestos or um, you know, toxic chemicals, uh, radiation, those types of things, you, you may be able to find that as you Google search and then that can become evidence and then you can couple that with a nexus letter from your doctor uh, to just double down on the fact that it is uh, most likely caused, right, from your time in service. Go beyond the, the minimum threshold of at least likely is not and take it that next step to more than likely or most likely. Uh, and uh, I, if anybody was serving there, I hope that uh, you, you find this information and you're able to file a, a claim and get that approved. In addition, if there's a surviving spouse out there whose spouse served there and passed away from a condition that could have been caused by one of these, that could warrant you dependency indemnity compensation, which is a monetary benefit for surviving spouses. So with that, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.